did you know that there's a group of plants that's over 360 million years old? The humble ferns have been around all that time, which means they've survived and in fact flourished, despite all the environmental changes our Earth has seen. This is an actual fern fossil. It's the cross section of a tree fern, and it was found right here in Tassie. It's over 180 million years old, and it's not too dissimilar to the tree ferns that we grow today. Holding this, I literally have time in my hands. Ferns drop in and out of favour, and although they're quite trendy at the moment, actually propagating them is a bit of a dark art. Sue McLaurin is one of just a handful of fern growers in the country. So what's so special about ferns then? Ferns are a fascinating plant in that they don't have seeds or flowers, they have spores. They grow by spores, and um, you can see the spore arrangement on backs of fronds. Inside these little, little dots here that are covered by a little indusium are sporangia, minuscule, beautiful little things that actually look like caviar. And within those are the spore. They're microscopic, they're tiny. It's like uh, mushroom dust, really. Often people think that it's a problem with a pest or disease, but in reality, it's part of the reproductive cycle. So can you take us through how to collect spores? I, I can't, you know. We're, we're here in front of this gorgeous clump of uh, sickle ferns, Tassie native. And let me just show you here the that little green, pronounced little fuzzy green lines on the end of the, uh, the, on the leaf margin, the frond margins. And this is unripe spore. This is spore that's not ready yet. Now this would be a perfect one to collect. You've got nice dark brown, sometimes even black if you need a good color. That would be a, a great one for collecting. So I'm guessing the paper bag has something to do with it. It but does. But how do we get them? Well, we'll, we'll take <laughs> our secateurs here and we'll just snip off little frond, we put it in the paper bag. Now, if you don't want to cut the frond, you can actually just put your bag underneath one of the fronds and just on a, one, of the, one of the ripe uh, spore arrangements, just scrape it with a knife. Yep. Put it in the bag, give it uh, half a week, four or five days, and the frond will have dried off and the sporangia will have released its spore. I don't have a favourite fern. I don't, I don't think I do. I, I, I had a thought, think about that, and uh, there are too many gorgeous varieties. Welcome to the spore house. <laughs> We've had a chance to bring in the spores that we collected from outside, and now we're going to separate them. And we've got our bag of spores now, and we'll do a We'll just do a cut straight through. And what we're left with is a bag of spore and spore cases. So the yellow is this actual spore of the fern, and the brown are the cases. We want to separate the spore cases from the spore. We're starting to be left with just pure spore. A few more cases there, and I'm happy to go on to the next stage. So first up, we're going to use a, uh, a mix. Very, ferns like high organic matter. So this is a, this is a mix of potting bark, yep. which is basic potting bark with uh, composted bark and sand. And then the rest, about 50%, is actual pure peat. Right. Okay, so it's nice soft, but it is fine. Feels lovely. Yeah, feels great, doesn't it? And the other one we're going to use is uh, the, it's just pure peat again. And we're using some uh, perlite. So with perlite, it can get really dusty. So that's why I have a mask on today. Don the mask. So we'll just don the mask. So we're gonna fill up this first one. Put up a bottom bed of perlite. Perfect drainage and water holding capacity. We'll yeah. fill that up. Tamp it down a bit. It's about a third full. Yeah, and what we want is airspace similar to the amount of soil that we have in it. Okay, so we're gonna take some uh, pure peat. And unfortunately, ferns at this stage don't seem to like cocoa peat. Right. So we fill it up to a certain level and then we tamp it down to make a nice firm bed. This next one, we will take our sieve potting bark with sand and peat. We'll just fill it up. 
Now we're pouring boiling water into the watering can. By using this, it enables it to get a much more even flow over the media. So this is pasteurizing it. Yep. This is getting rid of pathogens, like anything with fern growing, patience. <laughs> so just take your time and let it let the water flow through. And that's why we have the drainage holes in there. So the media is going to be sopping wet when we, uh, when we sew it. Now we need to wait maybe about half an hour for it to cool down. I will pop the lid back on. And this is to stop any spore or any fungi or anything, any pests from coming in just even between the time that we're doing this now and when we actually sew the spore. Well, Tina, we've given the media a chance to cool down. And we've given the weather a chance to cool down, too. I'm glad we're not out there. <laughs> yes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a very small amount of spore. There's a lot in this container. As evenly as we can, we're just going to shape the spore over the media. Can you see that folding yeah. in there? Yeah. As evenly as possible. It's tempting to keep going to make it all a beautiful yellow, but there's a lot of spores in there. A very tiny amount, we've sewn it, and that should give them space for growing. Next thing we'll do, we'll give it its home for the next three months. This is a really simple way of doing things, and you've got your own ready-made glass house. You've got as much moisture in there as you need for the ferns to go into their next stage, which is the sexual stage. So, could you pass me the next one along? We've got an example of, let's say, one or two months later, the spores, hallelujah, have germinated. So these are baby Dixonia ferns. These are baby Dixonias. These are the little prothallus stage. So it's taken maybe up to four or five months for it to get to this stage. So they are little single cell, usually heart-shaped little plantlets. Oh, yeah. So you can single cell, so they sit on the, they sit on the surface of their of organic matter, and they send root hairs down that, that uh, marry them into the soil. It's here that the fern starts to reproduce. It's at this stage they turn into what we call a sporophyte, the second part of its evolution. So they've sent down a root, they've been fertilized, the egg's been fertilized, and you've got your first sporophyte. And each one of those fronds is a separate plant. It is, yep, sends up one frond first. And do they need any food? I would suggest that uh, they don't need any food in the earlier stages at all. Okay, they're, they're self-sufficient, they can take care of themselves. Once they get to the sporophyte stage, you can start watering them or misting them with probably half strike CV solution, yeah. So Tina, we've got our little hothouse here with our sown spore. Now this should be put in a well-lit warm space. Now we're gonna look at vegetative production. So this is a uh, Asplenium Island Beauty. It's a form of hen and chicken. Can you see fern. these gorgeous little bulbs on the top of the frond? Yeah. So Mother Nature's given this plant two ways of propagating and we're gonna take advantage of the bulbs on top. You just take a little bit of a snip here and you've got the frond laden with the little... Oh, straight in. Straight, straight onto the media. This is, a, a me this is a, just a regular potting bark media with a bit of, bit of uh, perlite in it and fertilizer, slow release fertilizer. So we just lay that as you could on the top. And if you can just uh, chuck some soil on it. Just dust it over the just top. Just dust it over. And what that does is anchor it down. It gives the little bulbs a chance to, to get their roots into the soil. And with a bit of patience, three to four months, you've got nice little root developing and you've got uh, a number of new little ferns. Now, because these are a little bit more established, they don't require as much water and you can feed them. That's exactly right, yes, yep, yep. You don't need any layer or anything top on that. You just keep them moist and um, yeah, a, a definite, um, definite slow release in the mix and you can do, again, half strength. If you've got a fancy for prehistoric plants, then ferns are the way to go. And as you can see after chatting with Sue, they're not that hard to propagate and get going. So why don't you try it yourself? <laughs>